ladies and gentlemen, we welcome Javier Arpa of the Y Factory. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, well, first of all, I would like to thank Ang and all his team for the work that uh, you guys have done. It's impressive, uh, uh, everything that you have uh, organized for uh, this week. Uh, I just saw the catalog of the, uh, of the festival. It's also impressive. I've done books of my life, and this is a really good one. So congratulations to all of you. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about um, the work we do at the, at the Y Factory. First of all, I will explain you what, where, what is it that we, uh, that we do. And I will show you some of the projects that we have our undertaking with our students. The Y Factory, you probably know, it's a, uh, it's a group of people. Uh, led by Vini Mas. Vini Mas is one of the co-founders of MVRDV, which is a global uh, architecture firm based in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. We are about uh, 12 to 15 people, so it depends on the, on the semester. Um, what we do uh, is uh, we are a research center which is based in the University of Delft, that the architecture uh, school of, uh, of Delft in, in the Netherlands. And uh, what we do is to produce visions of the cities of the future. Um, this, uh, this research institute, founded by Vini Mas, as I said, was, um, is a partnership between uh, MVRDV and the uh, Architecture School of, uh, of Delft in the Netherlands, which is the place where I was trained. Probably you know MVRDV, probably you don't know the Y Factory. That's normal, that happens to me all the time. Everybody thinks that I work for MVRDV, but I don't. Um, I work for Delft and with the uh, direction of Vini Mas. MVRDV is a global firm that you probably know very well. This is, um, this is one of their uh, most uh, well-known projects. It was, um, this is the, the uh, Dutch pavilion for the Hanover exhibition in 2000. They did many other projects and uh, at a point uh, in, in time they decided also to start doing some research. So they started publishing, uh, publishing books and research that, that didn't have so much to do or that, had, uh, that were built in parallel with the, investi with the, uh, with the uh, practice that uh, they were making. MVRDV did a lot of research indeed and at a point in time Vinimas decided that it would be good to start uh, some sort of uh, educational institute in order to have uh, students learn from uh, his uh, ideas. We finally found a, a partnership with the School of Architecture uh, of Delft and we got a space. The School of Architecture of Delft, in which I was uh, trained, was uh, was previously set in a uh, in a building from the from the 1960s. This building burned, and after the the burning of this building, a new building was uh, was uh, was built. This is the new architecture school of Delft, and this is our space, which was uh, designed by uh, MVRDV. So, I would like to explain you a little bit what is it that we do. What we do is to produce uh, visualizations for the cities of the future. What we do is to try to project current topics like biodiversity or um, mobility, uh, nanotechnology, et cetera, et cetera, into the future and produce, and produce visions uh, about it. What our students uh, do in our research studio is to work on visualizations for, uh, for uh, possible futures. We don't speak about or we are not so much interested about dystopias, but we are more interested about utopias. How can a better future be? We have, uh, we have studied uh, density, we have studied intensity, biodiversity, mobility, technology, etc., etc. We have studied, the, uh, we have, uh, studied the, the, the future world of leisure. We have uh, undertaken a lot of projects in the last 10 years. Um, this is, uh, these are some of the uh, topics that we have uh, worked with. I won't go, um, I won't go one by one uh, uh, to explain them because that will be maybe very, uh, very boring. But uh, all in all, we have been uh, for uh, 10 years uh, established, uh, what we have done is to establish um, partnerships, not only with Delft, but with, with many other uh, institutions around the world. During the last 10 years, we have done collaborations with MIT, with IIT in Chicago, with Columbia in New York, with ETH in Zurich, etc., etc. So sometimes our students study in Delft, uh, sometimes the students come to Delft, some other times we go to other, uh, other schools. So we uh, are constantly receiving or traveling, uh, organizing workshops 
and studios uh, all, over the, all over the world. We also produce books. Uh, we have been doing books since the very beginning of the Y Factory. Each of the researchers um, wants to be disseminated. We want to disseminate the uh, researches that, that we undertake. So in the last 10 years, we have published uh, all those many books. We also, want to, we also want to engage with the public. We want to show the public, general public what is it that we do, what are our, our concerns. So we have organized exhibitions all over the world in the last 10 years. These are some images of exhibitions in Taipei. This is an exhibition in Seoul. This is an exhibition in Madrid, Munich, etc., etc. We think that it is very important to let the public know what is it that our concerns are. So how do we work? Uh, we work... Uh, we start from a scenario-based research. We ask ourselves questions. There are many topics that are totally current that interest us. Uh, we ask ourselves, what if everybody was middle class? What if everybody moved to France? What if everybody never owned a car, etc., etc.? And from that, we produce different worlds. Each of our studios is base or concentrates on one topic. As I said uh, earlier, we can be uh, studying biodiversity or uh, food production, energy production, etc., etc. What we try to do is to measure um, all the data that is related to uh, that topic. Then we, uh, we, be we follow this triangle. Then we try to uh, sort of build the software that maybe one day we let us generate future cities. And finally, what we do is to apply our researches into existing context. We love data. What we, uh, what we start doing uh, is, uh, is uh, to collect lots of data about the topic that we are studying. We try to parameterize and measure everything that is possible to measure. And then uh, what we do is to try to organize that data within uh, a, a certain software that maybe someday could be able to build the cities of the future. This is a very complicated process. Sometimes it, ha sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it requires a lot of resources and a lot of time. And we have been successful in producing the generation of certain, uh, of certain types of cities um, in the last years. And I will show you three of those, uh, three of those uh, studios that, uh, that, uh, that work very successful. Um, these are some of the applications of our ideas. Once, the, once the, the, the data is measured, once we are able to produce visions, we try to apply them into different contexts. This is the application of one of our, uh, uh, this is Green Dream, which uh, speaks about new ways of understanding sustainability, and this is applied to the city of Barcelona. Uh, we also work uh, on, for some time with the, in collaboration with the University of Hong Kong, trying to visualize the Hong Kong of the future. This is another visualization for the kampongs in uh, Jakarta. We studied for some time the qualities, the intensity, the uh, density, and the mix of uh, things happening in the kampongs in, uh, in Jakarta. And we produced this studio, which was called Super Kampong. Some other times, our visions, the visions for our students, uh, do have uh, direct implications in the production of, uh, of the office of uh, Vinimas and VRDV. This is, for instance, uh, <coughs> this is, for instance, one of the studios that had to do with the qualities of the North. One of the main qualities of living in the North, I mean in the North Pole, is the uh, light and transparency. This is one of the ideas that uh, Vinnie Mas has been uh, thinking of and working on for a very long time, and which resulted in the fabrication or the construction of this uh, shop in Amsterdam, which is fully transparent. Or it's built out, uh, out of uh, glass, uh, glass brick. The whole facade is built out of those. It's totally transparent and is built of, uh, of, of these bricks. It is very nice to see actually how people just immediately go and touch uh, the facade whenever they visit them. This is another, another uh, product which is, uh, which is uh, uh, under study, and that has to do with this initial research done by our students. This is a tra totally transparent kitchen in order to build a totally transparent world. I don't know, in, the, in this case, you want to see the mice or the cockroaches under your kitchen, but uh, still, I think that the experiment is quite, uh, is quite interesting. Um, I'm going uh, to um, uh, 
drive you through three of uh, our studios or researchers that are ongoing right now. This is uh, the first one is called porosity. Um, one day, some time ago, it's maybe uh, difficult or maybe it's too long to, to explain, we received one million uh, Lego blocks. So uh, one of the things that we decided to do uh, with it is to uh, study, well, what, kind of, what, can, what, what happens when you put all those Lego blocks together. We put our students to, uh, to, um, to build models of uh, a porous world. I don't know if, uh, uh, if, if, if you understand what, what I mean by porous. One of the things that we were looking at in the, in, the current, uh, in the current production of architecture is that many of the buildings that are produced are very uh, compact and solid and closed envelopes. We were interested by the possibility of uh, bringing something else to architecture, bringing something else to the city by opening up the envelopes that, as architects, we tend to, uh, we, we tend to, to build. So we understood that it was really interesting to open up the envelopes that we are building because of the qualities that that can, um, that, that, that can provide. Uh, most of the uh, skyscrapers that are being built nowadays in our cities and I, I, am, uh, I, I have been seeing some of them today upon, upon arriving tend to be very closed. Um, they don't open up to the city. They don't provide for more public spaces. They don't provide for more ventilation, for more publicness, etc., etc. So this is how we started. We asked our students to start by a simple tower this is the classical envelope tower. This could be the former uh, World Trade Center tower. And by just doing this, a lot is happening. By just doing that, there's open, this open space that uh, is, being, is being given to the uh, city, to the building, et cetera, et cetera. So each of our students, in a very manual way, started um, developing families of skyscrapers. These are some of them. Each of, each, each of the students uh, started um, developing step by step one family of skyscrapers. Sometimes you would, as you see, open up your belly. Other times you cut it. This one looks a little bit like a cactus. Some are more, uh, let's say, successful than the others. And, uh, but all in all, what they are trying to experiment is with the, uh, the, uh, the possibilities of opening up architecture and the city to more air, more ventilation, more publicness, et cetera, et cetera. This is, uh, this is what the students produce. As I said, this was produced manually. We didn't use any, uh, any software to produce this. Uh, students spent many hours uh, doing this, uh, day and night for a week, actually, uh, until we finally produced uh, this collection of towers that propose a different way of understanding our cities. Then, after having produced these amount of uh, experiments, of families, of towers that, uh, that could relate to the city in a different way, we tried to build the software in order to build those towers. We, 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 uh, we wanted to try, to, as I said, to measure everything that, uh, that could be quantified and build a software able to produce uh, that architecture. So the next studio was about that. How do you parameterize the construction of those towers? What are the, um, the parameters that need to be uh, inserted and how do you build them? Finally, this is the, uh, the, the result. These other towers, the first ones were building manually, and these ones were, uh, were totally computerized, and we ended up uh, building these other towers that suggest a very interesting architecture solution for our cities. Some, uh, um, I was yeah, last year in Bangkok, and I saw a very uh, inspiring work by Oles Rehren in, uh, in, the, in the city center of, of Bangkok, in, the, in which you start to see how a tower opens up and disintegrates and offers something else than just an enclosed envelope. So this is a work done by our students for uh, many weeks. This was really a great work. Um, it is super interesting to see how this maybe grottos can be opened into, uh, into, uh, into the skyscrapers. How, how much public our towers can be. 
So the next um, studio that, were, well, the one, another studio that I'm going to show you is called Barba, Life in a Fully Adaptable Environment. It has to do with the possibilities of, um, of new materials. Our what if question was, is there out there in the world a material that can adapt to our movement and create a space as we move. It has to do with the exploration of the individual space and the space that is shared with others. So our speculation was, let's say, that one day in the future, in 2000, I don't know, 200, there will be a, some kind of material that fully adapts to ourselves. Uh, this was our inspiration. I don't know if you know about this, uh, this comic. It's a, it's a comic by a French designer done in the 1970s. I used to, I grew with, this, with these puppets. Um, they are made of some kind of plastic material that lets them transform into anything. So if Mr. Barba Papa, the pink guy, needs to be a boat, he adapts and becomes a boat. If Barba Mama needs to... Uh, <coughs> needs to become a desk, she becomes a desk. So this was very much the inspiration behind this, uh, this project. So we were started looking at what materials there are out there, uh, what is it that we could be in, envisioning for the, for the future. And our students started understanding that this would sometime uh, be, uh, be possible. This also had to do with the exploration, not only of future materials, we don't know so much about, about, about those future materials, but what we, we know is about the needs of the human body. Um, what is it that the, that the body needs? What is the space that, this body, that the body needs? We, as you see here, we started uh, exploring, uh, exploring uh, Neufert, the catalog of, um, of uh, dimensions that the, body, the human body needs. So our students started developing a full uh, set of uh, proposals and studies about what is it that our movement uh, and our um, existence need. They uh, developed several, several videos and several uh, researches trying to let us understand what is it that we need as we move and how much is it that we can share or not with, uh, with the others. We uh, developed this in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in full detail. Um, this is the spaces that the human body needs. The halo that you see around is this nanomaterial. We don't, we don't know how to, how to build it, but we believe that it will exist someday. And this nanomaterial is adapting to the movement of the body and allowing for, uh, for uh, engaging with the existence of other, of other uh, people. So this is what this nanomaterial should do. This nanomaterial uh, should adapt to our existence. And then we, what we did was to try to um, explore other materials. Uh, we uh, spent several uh, semesters trying to explore what other materials are there that can adapt to our, uh, our human, uh, human body. And then, in the end, we produced, this is a very, uh, a very nice uh, felt carpet that adapted to all our needs. Then finally, we produced this, uh, this vision for the city of the future, which is called Barba. This is a five-minute video that shows how Barba life, how or how, how life uh, happens in the world of Barba. So this is me. When I'm sleeping, I just don't need, I don't need any space. It's only me, my body, and the very little space around my body. I wake up and the space starts uh, uh, adapting. The space starts reacting to the fact that I'm moving. Barbara sort of uh, understands what is it that I'm going to do, sort of perceives what my next moves will be. I am 
and Barbara lets me uh, engage with, uh, with others. It's important to say that one of the things or one of the main reasons behind the developing of Barba is the fact that uh, there's moments in which we don't need space, so much space and other moments in which we, we need uh, a lot more space. So uh, it has to do with the density of our cities and the need to share the little space that we have. Barba let us, uh, uh, let us experience this kind of situations. Barba also includes all the installations and all the um, piping, electricity, etc., etc. And includes all our needs. The video goes on and it shows uh, uh, a lot more uh, parts of the human activity. I'm going to cut it here because the time is, uh, is short. Uh, but I think that this way you can have an idea of how many things Barva uh, can, uh, can produce. The next, uh, the next uh, investigation that we started coming from Barva and coming from the idea that we need to live in a dense world that we need uh, to uh, try to fulfill, uh, even though we need to try to live in a dense world and this, our cities need to be dense, there's also another series of desires that need uh, to be fulfilled. So what we're trying to do with this next uh, studio, WeGo, is how to fulfill one's desires within a very high, uh, high uh, within a very dense urban context. Um, this is the, the point of departure, how to fulfill one's desires with, when you have to share space or share pipes or share a, a certain building with your neighbor. The studio started with investigation about the dream home. What is the home that we dream? So we produce this kind of, uh, of images that um, speak about, uh, that summarize one's, uh, one's uh, dreams about the, the, the house where they want to live. So the students, one of the students deci decided that it was more interesting to, uh, would be interesting to check social media and trying to understand what each person wants in a house. So these students spend quite a lot of time to, uh, analyzing what, is, what are the, uh, let's say, the desires of the people looking for homes uh, are. These desires um, uh, were then parameterized and measured in order to uh, produce a certain kind of profile. Trying to uh, several profiles were produced about the, uh, the desires of uh, of people wanting homes, and these kind of visions were produced. These visions sort of uh, summarize or mix all of these desires in one of the of the of the, uh, of the clients. Um, then once we understood, or we let the, the students understand that we need to fulfill our uh, desires in the construction of collective housing, uh, we uh, gave uh, each of our students, students in the studio, 17 in this case, a profile. We, each of the students would become a different neighbor within a certain slab, within a certain housing slab. Very different characters, very different people needed to live together in a, ho in a, in a, in a, in a housing block. So we, uh, we, and we tried to, um, we, uh, we measure exactly what the needs were, what the desires were, what the, what the uh, necessary spaces were, um, were. This has to do, in a way, a lot with Barba, the exploration of what, is, uh, what, what our needs, really, uh, spatial needs, really, really are. 
So each of those uh, 17 students became one character, and each of them had certain uh, desires, spatial needs, and all of them uh, produced this dream home. The problem is that you can have these dream homes, but uh, in, uh, in, if we want to live in a dense world, you have to start putting all those dream homes together. So this is what we wanted to do. Uh, how do we then um, uh, find an agreement in order to uh, live together and try to fulfill our desires and try to overcome conflict? Living together means that, uh, that there will be certainly conflict. What we did was to develop a game. A game in which each of the uh, each of the uh, the students became one of these characters. <coughs> each of the characters is more, let's say, different and special than the one next to you. And they develop a, a software in order to organize spatially their homes within uh, within a certain housing slab. We had the uh, this housewife, which required who wanted or dreamt of a single family home within a big plot. We had this other guy who wanted to have a um, roller coaster in, inside his apartment. Another person like this would be a book collector, totally different character that requires silence in order to live in his home and required, I don't know how many um, thousands of books within his apartment. This other guy who runs and wants to keep training in his home. This other child who, uh, whose dream is to jump within a bubble castle. Or this, which is my favorite ca character, is the super lazy guy. That's the, this guy that basically does nothing, and what all he does, and, when, and the only activity he does is to uh, is to play bowling. So this is this would be his dream home, a uh, home with some space to uh, just uh, just uh, relax and a bowling alley. We uh, we put them all together, and what we did was to start a game, develop a software. Our students, each of them was a character, and then they, they, they were playing uh, this game in order to organize their, um, their spatial location within a given slab. There was a, uh, there was a, this is a very compact and efficient slab, housing block, and each of the, of the students, each of the characters, finally uh, found their own, uh, their own apartment that, is, that more or less satisfies uh, their needs. Living together requires agreement, so of course uh, there's certain degrees of satisfaction from what one desired to what uh, one actually finally obtains. This is a little bit, this here what you see is, uh, is how the bowling alley, what from the dream home becomes a, 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 an apartment within that slab. There's a certain degree of satisfaction, but you uh, have uh, to, as I say, give up uh, certain uh, certain requirements. Finally, each of them got their own, uh, their own apartment. Each of them uh, more or less satisfies or fulfills his or her dreams. And this is the final result. This is a slab, a housing block, in which each of the homes, the permanent home, uh, is the home of one's dreams, but within a dense uh, uh, urban context. The next, uh, the next uh, step will be probably to try to build uh, this slab within a, a certain urban uh, urban uh, context within within a certain site. Right now, um, as I said earlier, this is probably the construction of the permanent house that we dream. The next step is um, try to develop or uh, or construct flexible homes that. Uh, adapt over time. This is what we are looking at now. Uh, spaces that fully contract or expand according to the presence of the, uh, of the uh, resident within the, the home. And this is what we are preparing for the next uh, fall, which is called On The Go. This is housing, housing of one dreams for people on the move. It can be refugees or expats or um, or all kinds of people that, uh, that have temporary needs in housing, Airbnb for instance, how a certain slab can adapt through time through the, to the presence of, uh, of, of uh, each of these residents that will be uh, staying during different periods of time. This is uh, the, the, uh, the project that we, are now, uh, we have now started developing. We did recently a, uh, a project for a hotel with the students from Israel and Australia. It's an, it's an hotel that adapts to the present uh, that uh, 
to the presence of the, uh, of the residents. If there's one resident, the resident gets the whole volume. If there's 24 residents, each one gets a lot little space. This is what we are, we are trying to, de to develop now. And this is what we are, uh, we are going to try to build in the coming fall with our students. So thank you very much. <laughs>